Well, today I'm going to show you some of the steps it took to turn this small study into this big painting. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about working on paper and some of the different papers there are. Uh, and I also want to talk a little bit about inspiration and how to find inspiration. I just made this little painting and I made it by using a stencil that I made. Now, once I made the painting, I thought, wow, I like that. I'm going to make it into a big painting. So I projected the stencil onto a large piece of paper and then cut it out. And so you can see I now have a big stencil. I think one of the most important things you can do to become a better artist is to look at a lot of art, whether that's painting or sculpture or furniture design. What you're doing is you're increasing your visual vocabulary and it gives you something to draw from when you go to create something of your own. And it's not copying. What you're doing is you're borrowing. It's, it's a continuation. And if you think of art, art is a continuum. And if you look at music, uh, like for instance, Led Zeppelin. You listen to Led Zeppelin, uh, you're hearing remnants of Robert Johnson. And a really good quote from Frank Stella is, artists paint other people's paintings until they get bored with it and then they paint their own. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Before we go downstairs and start to work on that big painting, I wanted to show you these three drawings of famous artists' work. Now, I made drawings of their work because I don't know what the copyright laws are, so I figure I don't have anything to worry about because I drew them. So anyway, this is a drawing of a painting by the artist Myron Stout, and this is a drawing of a sculpture by the artist Henry Moore, and this is a drawing of the famous coffee table by Osama Noguchi. And the reason why I'm showing these to you is I wanted to point out their influence on one of my paintings. Okay, well enough said. Let's go downstairs and get to work on the big painting. And the reason why I'm making the painting downstairs is because I'm going to spray the painting. And I consider the downstairs my dirty studio and the upstairs here is my clean studio. I'm going to make the painting on a piece of 30 by 40 inch paper. And I generally buy my paper in a roll that's about 44 inches wide. And you need to stretch watercolor paper. So just do a Google search on how to stretch watercolor paper. So you can see I've already got this stretched. And now I'm going to mark out 30 by 40. And I also wanted to mention that this is a hot pressed paper. That just happens to be what I like to use at this point. And hot pressed means it has a smooth surface and a cold pressed paper. It generally has a, a tooth, what's called a tooth, or it's a bumpy surface. I'm using a framing square to start the lines on the watercolor paper. And I'm using a piece of plexiglass as a straight edge to extend the line the full distance. I'll measure up to the 40 inches and then I'll square across, holding the square on my straight line. Now I'm using a two inch painter's tape and I'm masking off with the tape on the inside of the line. Now I'm going to tape the stencil in place and just, I'm just going to tape it on the edges where the stencil runs past where the painting will be on the paper. But I'm also going to put a little tape underneath the stencil so as I'm spraying it doesn't blow up and underneath the stencil. There's more tape on the bottom of the painting because I wanted more space between the image and the end of the paper. I'm going to use a turbine sprayer to spray the paint and the paint I'm using is an acrylic enamel and I'm going to thin that out a little bit with some water. Before I start spraying, I thought I'd show you the turbine sprayer that I had mentioned. Now, these are really easy to use because you simply plug them into a 110 receptacle. They cost anywhere from maybe $700 to $1,200 depending on the model that you buy. And uh, the one thing that I don't have and you really need is a dedicated paint room.
I removed all of the staples and now the painting is free from the stretcher board and I want to cut the painting away from the oversized paper but I don't want just a straight razor blade cut so I'm going to put a lightly deckled edge on the, on the outside edge of the paper. I use a straight edge on the edge of a piece of plexiglass and put that piece of plexiglass right on the inside of the line so as I tear the paper away you're not left with any of the pencil mark. I use a squeeze clamp and clamp the plexiglass to the stretcher board on each side to help hold the straight edge in place. And then using a sharp razor blade, I lightly score the paper. Don't cut through the paper, just lightly scoring the paper. Now I'm going to use a clean brush and clean water and run the brush along the straight edge and it seeps into the score that you just put into the paper with the razor blade. I've waited about five minutes and now I'm going to hold a little downward pressure on the plexiglass and gently tear the paper away. Okay, well that's about it, and I had a lot of fun with this painting. I never sprayed a big painting before. The little one that I did in the beginning, I used just a spray can. Um, if you got something out of the video, please leave a comment or like me on Facebook. Check out johnpeters.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.